Okay, it is 10 o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everybody. This is going to be over uh, Darkroom Booth, um, getting started with Darkroom Booth. Um, so first thing um, that I want to talk about is we have an online outline uh, or a guide to follow along with. Um, and this is also going to be where you can um, rewatch this video later. But there's uh, links with more detailed instructions on the stuff that we're going to be going over. So if you go to darkroomsupport.com and click on Darkroom Booth, at the very bottom we have webinars. And this is going to be what we're covering. The video uh, will replace this little placeholder as soon as it gets uploaded. It should be maybe uh, either today or tomorrow. As long as everything goes smoothly, um, it'll uh, be uploaded pretty quickly. Um, so first thing we're going to start off with is uh, licensing. If you buy the software from our website, uh, you can use it on up to two computers at the same time. Um, a lot of times people buy it from a, uh, a dealer and they, uh, they might sell a single license copy. So if you see a difference uh, why you're only able to use it uh, on one computer at a time, a lot of times the dealers, when they sell you a whole booth, it comes with a single license copy. But from our website, you can use it on up to two computers. Um, and um, it gives you an activation code. You download the software, activate it. It comes with a year of updates. So that's your maintenance plan. Whenever you purchase the software, it has a year of updates that you can do. And um, after that year expires, you can choose to renew the maintenance plan for $95. Uh, if it expires for more than a, uh, a year, so if it's two years past when you purchased it, it goes to $195, but it's $95 to stay current per year. Um, uh, so to download the software, and this is kind of cool, um, you do not need a licensed copy to do template design work. So if you have one computer that's your booth computer and you want to work on your desktop, um, you can use an unlicensed copy. But right here we click on Darkroom Booth and then Software Downloads and Release Notes. And this is how you would um, download the latest build. Here we have, uh, this is the latest available release. Um, and I'm using a slightly newer version that uh, should be coming out pretty soon. Um, most of you will not see any difference, but there uh, is one difference that might come up. Um, and here are links that go a little bit more in depth into um, maintenance plan and upgrading. If you were to accidentally upgrade and you're not ready to um, to renew your maintenance plan, there's instructions on how to roll back and different things that you can do. Um, but um, to see what version you currently have installed and compare it, um, the uh, we're going to go ahead and open up Darkroom Booth. Oops. Okay. So um, if you go to Global Settings right here under System Info, it'll tell you um, when your maintenance plan expires and also the... Um, the version that you have installed right here. So I'm on 998, which is a beta version that hasn't been released yet. But So I can look at that version, go back to the downloads page, compare it and see if it's time to update. Or I can, uh, um, if I see that there's a new update, I can see whether I'm still within my maintenance plan and whether it's time to renew it or um, where I am uh, covered by maintenance. So if, you, if your maintenance plan has expired, you can still install, um, update your software up until the date it expired. So let's say my plan expired 10-1 uh, of 21, and I can go back to Darkroom and see, well, and all of these versions came out before then. So if there is a version that came out after um, October 1st, if I installed that, it would, uh, I would be required to renew my maintenance plan. Okay. Um, so, 
Um, let's go ahead and so you you can download the software, use it as a in a trial mode to, to do your design work. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that because that's a feature. That, uh, it's pretty neat. You don't have to pay any extra money. Um, if you have a, a designer in a different state, you can have them design on, on licensed copy. Or if you want to be a designer uh, for Darkroom, you actually don't even need a, uh, a licensed copy of design. So um, we're going to go ahead and um, let's start at the beginning. Um, so when you open up the software, it should kind of look like this. I've uh, reset it back to um, kind of the default settings so we can all uh, um, work on it together and learn how to do certain things and, uh, as we move along. So first thing I would always uh, suggest is that you just test it out in its most basic configuration that uh, before you try adding and doing a whole bunch of stuff, just make sure everything, the basics are working. So. I have a basic touch screen event. Uh, one of the things a lot of times people will do is they'll test out like a green screen event without actually having a green screen and things will come out a little bit funky. Uh, you do need uh, the green screen for a green screen event. Um, there is, uh, we did add remove.bg, but we're gonna skip that for right now for just basic uh, understanding. If you're using a green screen event, um, and you're testing out the software, you want to have a green screen background for right now. Um, so um, it's a good idea to just try out one of the sample ones, not the mirror one, and just make sure everything's working. So um, first thing I'll need, I'm using my webcam for this uh, webinar. So I'm going to switch on my uh, DSLR and... Um, my printer. And we'll only use the printer for just a little bit because it does make a little bit of extra noise. Um, but uh, so I have those two things turned on. The software should automatically recognize any supported, uh, directly supported DSLR. And if I go to my camera menu, um, you can see that my uh, 6D is plugged in and almost 50% power. Um, I'm using just basic manual settings. I don't know that actual exposure is correct on this or not. Um, if you're familiar with cameras, and uh, then manual works great. If you're not too familiar, I would stick with program. If you are using external an external flash, then manual is kind of required. So at that point, you would need to learn a little bit more about cameras. Um, but there are a whole bunch of uh, camera guides on YouTube, and we also have a couple on um, darkroomsupport.com. So my camera is detected. Let's switch over and add my printer in global settings. Um, printer options. Add printer. I'm using a DS40. Um, at using a directly supported printer helps a whole bunch. Um, you can see that it automatically recognizes I have 4 by 6 media. So and that's it. I'm ready to go. Um, I have my camera and my printer. Without adding any additional stuff, I'm going to just test it and make sure everything's working okay. I'll switch back over to output menu. And um, what I'm going to do is switch to that. Um, I'm going to just set it to change, uh, take one photo. And that's just for time's sake. Um, okay. So it should start up. Click uh, space bar to start because I'm not using a touch screen here. And it's just going to take one photo. And then it's going to, you can see it's a little bit overexposed. Um, it's now going to print out. So we know just kind of the basics are working. Um, another thing I'd really suggest is whenever you're kind of st uh, starting out, um, make a duplicate of the event that you're changing um, so you can always go back to the original if you need. 
So I'm going to do that. I probably should have done it before, but um, we're going to create a new event and call it demo. And so now that one, I'm going to switch back to one. And once again, I'm only I'm changing it to one just so it's a little bit quicker for you guys. You don't have to wait for my camera to take that many pictures. Um, and um, now we're going to start adding a little bit more. We have our um, our printer, our camera. Let's go ahead and uh, have it set to. Let's add our email. So um, Darkroom comes with uh, uh, email account built into it now. So I can just put my reply email address. Um, or I can also, uh, if I wanted to use, let's say, uh, a Gmail account. Um, and Gmail's a little bit funny. Um, You have to go into your Gmail settings and enable less secure apps um, to use Gmail. If you're using Yahoo Mail, um, you need to create a Yahoo or an app password through Yahoo. But both of those are done through uh, um, by logging into your email account through your browser. And we have guides for both of them on uh, on that. But what we want to do is click test. And just make sure it's okay. More than likely, if this first time setting up, it's going to say the connection failed, and that's because you need to add um, uh, enable less secure apps in your Gmail settings. Um, I'm going to add one more account. I'm going to go into um, Event Gallery, and this is for hosting. If you haven't checked out Event Gallery, it's uh, super easy and uh, very useful. Um, so um, we go to settings, API. What I like about it is I can always, I don't have to worry about you guys seeing my API key. I can always regenerate a new one. Um, so that's real helpful for my privacy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So event gallery, and we're just going to paste that right there. And account validated. So uh, that's set up as well. Got a couple questions. Let me see if I can answer them real quick. Does it work when an internet connection is lost? Uh, yes, as long as you're not using anything that requires internet. Um, if you're sending out, uh, like uploading to event gallery, that's uh, obviously not going to upload um, when if you lose your internet. Um, is it possible to print one strip instead of two? Is it probably printer related. Yeah, so uh, most printers are going to be four by six printers. So um, they print a four by six and cut it in half. Um, there aren't very many two by six printers out there. But if you have one that is able to print a two by six, it, it would print one. Um, can I print a four by six instead of a strip? Yeah. And what will. We'll, uh, when we get to our, uh, the template part, we'll kind of talk about um, different options there. So um, I will cover that four by six in just a moment. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and enable email. I'm not using Twilio, but I can still enable photo of the phone and what it's gonna do is it's gonna send through my email account and it's gonna ask me for, for a phone number. I'm actually not gonna actually use it because then I'd have to type in my phone number. Um, but uh, I'm going to save output. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Let us create a folder. And I'm just going to browse and select that folder. And 
and it's going to save the output images, which is the strip. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for the original images. And this is just a backup, just in case something fails. I still have images automatically backed up to that folder. So um, one thing I have a lot of people that will want to do is try that same thing, but go straight to a flash drive. Um, it kind of does work. You just have to make sure you select a folder on the flash drive. If you select just a drive, um, that will cause some issues. So you want to create a folder on the drive and then output to that. Um, and okay. So copy in my originals, enabled email, and then uh, output. And the last thing I'm going to go ahead and automatically post to event gallery. So we'll go ahead and uh, just for fun, we'll change out our template. Templates are in the next section. So we're just going to test this out real quick. But here's a, a four by six right there with a single image. Whoops. And then we'll want to change the print size to uh, four by six. There's also an option right here where you can set it to auto. So if you choose a different size, they'll automatically reconfigure. So you don't have to keep changing it over here. So we're switching back to And the other thing is right here, you also have match output. Now, earlier, I didn't want to use that because I, I had it set for to take four images in the template, but I only wanted it to take one. But um, this is pretty helpful. They'll use those two automatic uh, settings. So we'll go ahead and test it out again. Before we do too much, we always want to test and make sure everything's still working. Um, Probably should have adjusted the camera exposure just a little bit because it's a little brighter there. And then well, this is a little difficult. I don't have a mouse and it's not a touch screen. I can't see my mouse. And I'll show you how to enable that option in just a second. Okay. Let's enable the, the mouse cursor. Uh, I'm unchecking that option right there. Ooh, uh, Nick, uh, the iPad um, webinar was last week. It has been uploaded, and uh, you can get to it uh, in darkroomsupport.com just under iPad um, and then webinars. Okay, so one thing you'll notice about this is uh, I think you guys are looking right there. Um, the color's a little bit off, and that's a question that we get in support every once in a while that the color's a little funny whenever I. I use this template. There is actually an effect right here. So if you've tested this template and you also you get the same thing if we go to our uh, screen template. Oops. Click choose. This one right here has a uh, an effect on it. No, that's not it. Effect right there. That's caused uh, causes it to go into a uh, uh, a negative. So it, it's meant to look like a um, a negative uh, film strip. If you wanted to remove that, then it'd be a positive and like E6 or slide film. So. Um, and this is kind of just a segue into our template section where I think we'll probably spend most of the time. Um, the, there are two different types of templates. You have your print template, that's what people interact with, and then you have your print, uh, I'm sorry, your screen template, that's what people interact with, and your print template, and that's what you, it's outputted to a, um, um, a print or uploaded. Um, one more thing before we get into templates, we got to because we're testing everything out, make sure everything's working before we move on. Go to event gallery. There's uh the the demo that I just took. Uh, it takes a couple seconds, so I wish I had done it a little bit faster so you guys can actually see how quickly it works. I will leave it open and we'll test it out in just a moment so you can see just how smooth and uh, seamless it is. 
So um, back to templates. So you have, this would be your screen, what people are going to see and touch and work with. Um, it can have, um, buttons like this that you can program. Um, if we look at the um, video option template, you can see this one has quite a bit on it. And depending on what state it's in, different things are going to show. So this is during the photo session. And then once, uh, if you choose video, it has record and stop buttons. Just clear my questions up. Um, if anybody has any questions while we're moving along, or, um, please ask them, and I will try to answer them quickly uh, without have, so you don't have to wait, and you can ask more questions. So um, that is screen template. Even though you can't see all that stuff, it doesn't mean it was deleted. It's just hidden. And uh, another thing that a lot of people will think is that what you have here is what it's going to look like or work on. It's just showing the state depending on where you are. So changing it to a track mode doesn't mean everything's gone. Um, or that's how it'll work. It's just showing you what it would look like in that specific state. Because this can be a little bit cluttered. Okay, so we'll go ahead and... Um, I accidentally deleted a start button. How can I create a start prompt without a button? Well, I mean, you could set your, uh, we'll go over the commands in just a moment. You don't have to have a button. You could just have it set that they touch the screen to start. Um, but we're going to create a, a screen template in just a moment with buttons. Um, the, um, this template right here looks super, super basic, and it's there for a very specific reason uh, that you can use this to test. If you don't have a live view, it'll automatically create a live view. Let's go ahead and uh, run with it. You can, you can see that there's nothing on it except for background and this photo booth text. So you can see uh, the text shows up automatically and then the live view will show up automatically. So that one is there specifically for um, testing. Uh, you can see without having a whole bunch of extra stuff, is it still working? Um, let's see. So we're going to create one from scratch, completely from scratch. Um, I'm using um, uh, 1920 by 1080 for my resolution. Um, you can actually do a custom resolution. I have two displays. If I had them stacked on top of each other, I can then do 1920 by um, 2160. And that's just multiplying that. Um, but you can have a template that spans multiple screens, and there's a guide for that on... Uh, in the screen template section in Darkroom support. I'm going to just use it on the one that you guys can see. So, um, demo screen. And background color, text color, I'm going to leave everything else. Same resolution. Uh, the main thing is you do want to have the resolution set to match whatever output you're using. Okay, so let's... Um, Add a background. I think I probably have one on my desktop. Screen. That'll probably work. Okay, and this is just a background graphic on uh, that I'm going to add stuff on top of. So next thing I'm going to want to do is add, um, let's say, a live view. Let me see if I can move this up so you guys can read everything. The larger the live view, it can cause uh, some issues. So if you can do a full screen live view, it just might cause some lagging issues depending on your uh, um, CPU. 
Um, and then we're going to take three photos. Oops. I want it to be three and one. And I'm using the arrow keys to nudge it. If you hold down control, uh, any uh, those arrow keys will work in uh, times two increments. If uh, you hold down shift, it will work in half increments. So there's our um, samples, our live view. Uh, let's add some text. Um, uh, what we're going to be using is placeholder text. So I'm going to just uh, say that. Make it a little bit smaller. And this is just to help guide the, uh, the people through the session. So this will be replaced by the text from the text menu. So if I have a whole bunch of long text, I'd want to make sure that I have enough space for it. Um, and then I'm going to add another piece of text. And this is a placeholder for the countdown. The countdown will automatically appear here if I do not add it a, a second object. So um, anytime you add text from here, it's going to remove it from the basic one. And then, um, and then just so it's not too, we're not getting too complicated, I'm going to uh, add it, just a start button. Um, pretty, uh, let's go with shape, rectangle, rounded corners, text, start, and probably too large, we'll go with 20. And what actually turns it into a command is this booth command right here. So um, start session. Let's see what it looks like. That's a lot bigger than what we need. I think we can make that look a little bit nicer. So let's do um, do a green. And um, outline. Outline can be white, drop shadow. Let's see what that looks like. OK. So there's our little start button. We're going to go ahead and uh, save as. And it'll automatically save it to the booth screens folder. That's where you want to save your screen templates. And uh, we're going to talk about print templates in just a second. It's a slightly different area. But uh, we have a few questions. Let me go through those real quick. Accidentally deleted my start button. How do I create a start prompt without a button? Um, well, we just added a button there, um, but if you want to um, just automatically um, start whenever they touch the screen, you can add a command to your left mouse button, which is the same as touching the screen, and then start session. Um, so that would uh, start the session as soon as they touch the screen. And then... I'm going to go ahead and um, switch that back. And then in your start text, we talked about the, the placeholder text. It's pulling from here. So instead of uh, press start to begin, um, you can uh, have it set to start. Um, uh, touch the screen to begin. We can test that out real quick. Now I removed the uh, the left mouse click to start session, but you can see that the text shows up there. Um, 
So that, that placeholder text is then used in the spot where we uh, decide. Uh, okay. Um, it's live then. Uh, strings for text. And... Yeah, uh, so yeah, this is a list where that, that text uh, is located. Um, can I add text after the shoot? Um, I don't believe so. I'm not sure if I'm following that question, but you can't uh, change the, um, go into the print and actually, honestly, I've never tried that. So yeah, you can update it. Um, there's another option that might work better for automation. Um, now it's cutting right here because it's set to view an aspect square. So that's why it was showing a little bit weird. So uh, adding text after the shoot. So let's say you capture, uh, do a, um, a session. You can use the uh, photo note option and it'll give an option to type in a, uh, a note. Uh, you can also use signature to sign um, using the touch screen, but the photo note along with uh, an option added to the print template. Um, I'll be sure to cover that when we get into the print templates. So uh, I think that's what you're looking for if you're talking about texting after the shoot as in uh, SMS. Um, it has to be programmed in. You, you can use the kiosk um, to do it afterwards, but uh, we're not going to be covering kiosk in this one. Um, so I hope I answered that question. Um, but blah, blah, blah. I have many template strips that are from another photo booth software. Are they a PNG? Can I make dark and custom? Um, yeah. If you have, uh, if you're moving over from another software and there you have them saved as PNGs. Um, I have um, I have something I can show you um, that uh, would work similar, but I'm assuming you're uh, I don't know that I have any strips and I'm trying to avoid going to Photoshop. Um, um, but I'll show you how you can just take custom and make one custom. Um, okay. So next we are getting into, um, uh, the output template. So, um, let's see, what do I got? Um, I'm going to use that same background that we just used. Hold on just a second, because oh, I want to show you a few different options for this, and I believe I have some that I built for um, the Photo Booth Expo. Yeah, that one works right there. And there, there is a really cool video um, that was just uploaded. I think last week the cut goes over. If you don't have a live view, it automatically create a live view where uh, the uh, live view actually moves. So if you're not subscribed on YouTube, be sure to um, check that out. Uh, I post usually once a week to YouTube for anybody that's not aware of that. Um, okay, so we got our print template. A few different print templates. Let's start with, um, now it's not a two by six, it's uh, gonna be a four by eight, um, but uh, the concept is the same. So um, let's start off with, first we're gonna do a four by six. Um, demo.
just making sure oh, it does not need to be a custom size. It needs to be four by six. Okay, so we're going to add our artwork, and we're essentially going to do the same thing that we did with the um, screen template. Um, we're going to place those image nodes. Uh, you also might call, uh, hear us call them uh, photo objects. But uh, now this one is not made for a four by six, but a screen the resolution on the screen and the size uh, to a four by six are not exact, but close enough. So, and these are three hundred DPI, so or uh, or they're actually ten eighty by nineteen twenty, which is close enough to um, four by six three hundred DPI. So I don't think anybody would um, be able to see. Uh, a loss in resolution. So uh, next thing we're going to do is let's add some photos. And, and because this isn't a strip, I'm going to add the photos individually. And you know what? This one's going to be uh, uh, just a single image. Okay, so. And if you wanted to have the, some of these objects go on top, you would um, have it as a PNG. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But this is just a basic single image, 4 by 6 And uh, just for fun, we'll um, round the edges, draw frame, and drop shadow. Okay, and that's an ugly drop shadow. Let's fix that. Um, go with five, five, five. Okay, there you go. The other one was just a little bit too extreme for me. Save as new template, and there's our four by six with a uh, a little border around it. Um, next thing we're going to do is use a, um, a PNG. This is going to be a four by eight, but we're going to pretend it's a two by six. I mean, you can you can pretend it's a four by eight as well. Uh, it works for either. It's just more people are going to be doing two by sixes, but the concept is identical. Um, so click new. Four by eight. I think it's three images. Kind of hard to see in the thumbnail. Oops. And it is vertical. So I'm going to add the graphic again first. And I'm going to place the photos on top. And then I'm going to change the order. So browse. Um, And then after this one, we'll take a second to answer some questions. Or four by eight. So, hmm. you know what? It's not you know even a four by eight. I, Wally asked for a very specific size. Um, details is. Five, is that five by eight? No. Three point five by eight. I believe that looks correct. Um, some quick math in my head. That's the wrong size. No, 4.5 by 8. There's the size. Okay. So uh, there's a whole bunch of sizes built in, depending on the printer that you're using uh, for different outputs. But if you see, uh, if there's one that's um, 
not in there, but you can print it. You can go to custom size and then type in the, the pixel dimensions. Um, but we're gonna fit and fill entire page. Okay, that looks correct. Um, next thing we're gonna do is add a photo. And that is bigger than what we need. Let's hold on right there. Okay. And then um, I'm going to copy, paste, paste, and just kind of eyeball these kind of where I think they should go. I'm going to double click on this one to change this to photo two. Otherwise, they would all have the same image. And photo three. And we want them to be behind the graphic. So this is where uh, we're getting into using those PNGs. And now they have this cool little shape uh, with the image behind the graphic and even some other graphic elements over the top of the image. Um, so that's using a PNG with transparency. It's kind of, let me see if I can bring it over here so you guys can see it. There's the, the file and you can see through the, uh, this gray or the bluish color that you can see that it is cut out. So that's a P, using a PNG graphic with transparency. Um, okay, let's switch back to darkroom and save as. four, five, by eight. And there's a really good reason why I didn't put in 4.5. If I put in a dot, um, that tells uh, um, Windows that that's your file extension. So try not to use any spell, special characters and your file names. Um, a better option would be uh, underscore or hyphen uh, instead of the uh, period or the dot. So there's our three image strip. We're gonna make one more screen temp or one more print template, and I'm gonna show you how we can use all three of them within one session. But let's uh, check on some uh, questions. Send, uh, uh, is there a way to send uh, pictures to an external iPad kiosk for guests to send? Um, without using the booth, yes. Uh, if you go to darkroomsupport.com and type in kiosk, uh, it should pull up the guide on using it. Um, it uses uh, the, the slideshow menu to create and then it, um, and you're using the intranet um, locally to communicate um, and uh, display them on any smart device, uh, even a smart TV with a browser would work. But uh, you can use an iPad with a kiosk browser. Um, do you get a signal that has problems? Do you get a signal if the booth has problems? Um, no, you, you wouldn't get a, a signal if there's uh, any issues with the, um, with the booth. Not a bad idea if there's some sort of error message to send it. Uh, alert. I'll pass that on. Maybe uh, maybe that's something that we can add. Not that I know of. I don't believe there is an option for that. Uh, which part that deals with the colors in the camera? of the camera. Um, the uh, color is going to be typically your white balance. So you can adjust the white balance on your camera. Um, we typically stay out of camera settings because that's kind of something uh, that isn't necessarily software related. That's just general camera operation. But we do have a guide in darkroomsupport.com under the camera and capture section on camera basics. Um, but uh, YouTube is a great place for learning how to uh, uh, boosting your camera skills. 
Um, also, uh, taking a camera uh, class, uh, extended education. Um, so, okay, template. Uh, one more template. I think we already did screens. We did that first. So, um, wrap up menu and phone list. Cool. We're on on track. Uh, go ahead and keep the camera. Uh, the questions coming, and um, I'll do my best to make sure we get all of them answered. Okay, uh, one more template. Uh, it is going to be ooh, uh, 720 by 1280. Okay, we talked about custom sizes. Um, So um, let's uh, add some artwork. Rose. That guy right there. Okay. And you can see this is a uh, another just kind of it's a very similar border with a single image. We're going to add a photo and change the order. So you can also uh, move it, even though it's behind, you can still see the anchors. But if I accidentally click on something other than the anchor, it's going to select the other object. So um, that's typically why I like to uh, um, adjust it while it's on top of the graphic and then move it afterwards. So uh, did I name it? Yeah. What do we got? 720 by 1280, and that's the resolution. Um, so, um, save as new. Um, we're going to choose that guy, which is our single image. We're going to choose print alternate. Um, and we're going to select that one. And what's going to happen is automatically, based on the template that's selected, it's going to match the output. So um, let's have a prompt at the start of the session. And um, mm, for, let's see, event gallery. Now we'll just go to a, a, a folder. Um, copy originals, okay, that's what we're, where we'll do it. Um, we're gonna enable animations and I'm gonna select the other template right here. So you can see we're shooting horizontally, but I've selected a vertical template. Um, all that's going to do, just like any other template, is it's going to constrain the proportions and it's going to crop. So I just wanted to show you um, that um, what happens when you do it. Um, I could build another screen template that's vertical and it just essentially what you guys can kind of see up there on the camera, it's just going to constrain it like this and then you have a vertical image. I don't know, I can't see how well it looks, but you get the idea. So um, let's start that session. Ooh. I don't have a printer set up for eight inch, the four and a half by eight. Uh, DX100 would be great for that, but um, you can see that the option. So if this was a two by six, you know what? We're going to do this right. We're, I'm going to change it to, um, we'll just select one of these other two by sixes so you can see the option, what happens when, when it does that. Um, print alternate. Um, okay, we'll just select that one for right now. It won't have the same, same design, but, uh, 
So we'll start. And if we choose this template, it's now going to take three images and Now you can see why I changed it to a single image because this can be a little bit boring. Okay. Let's see if that prints out. Oh, the note. I forgot to add the note. I have it on my notes too. <laughs> um, we just, I don't know that it's going to do anything. Uh, let's see. Um, then, yeah, we'll email it. So it did not add that note. Um, and there's, Remember earlier how I told you if you have a lot of text, make sure you make enough space. We didn't, so this is where testing comes in really, uh, uh, really important. So choose um, if we're using a, a photo note. Um, I think it's. Insert special. Ooh, what a... Obviously, this is not something I use very often. But what would what, what we're going to do is add signature, and I'll have to find that, and uh, I'll add it to the the list because um, it's been a while since I've added a note. I thought it was just text, but um, so that would uh, we're giving that space for it to. Um, to be able to sign, let's see, add. I have to look it up. Um, but uh, yes, you can add signature or photo note, and then you would, if you're doing the signature, you would want to add this option right um, here. Review. Enable uh, booth edit and uh, doodle, I believe, and allow you to sign. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, and we took three images, and that vertical did it, it did not put where to go. Copy originals. So there you can see it's uh, cropped. It's MP4. So you can see it's playing the GIF in a cropped version. Um, and that's because we added. So I know I did that pretty quick in. Kind of hard to explain without actually seeing what's happening. Copy originals, enable animations, and then I selected that template. Typically, you'd want to have the aspect ratio um, or the orientation similar, um, but I just wanted to show you two different things at the same time: the cropping vertically, and then also outputting to uh, animate GIF. Um, and we're going to go into uh, wrap up and um, so from here after the session is done you can uh, you click here sometimes you have to click away and then click back on it um, you can output to uh, wrap up demo let me create a new folder Demo two. Okay. So it's going to output the original images. If I click copy to folder, a lot of people think that you have to um, assign all of these and then do your global save path. 
can do them all at once. You can uh, use these options individually uh, and very specifically the um, or you can do them all at once. You can check all of these options and then have it set to go to um, your output folder. Um, but let's say right here I just wanted to generate my email and phone list. Um, view as a CSV file and it should show me the images that were captured along with the um, email address. So then I can take that and uh, if I was collecting data for marketing purposes I can pull that into constant contact or um, your CRM. So that's the wrap up tab and that's kind of where uh, the end of our uh, uh, our list. Um, on the, the link I also have going beyond the basics and some additional links and other resources to kind of because um, a lot a lot of information to pack into one hour and it's impossible to put everything that Booth can do within one hour. Um, but on for anybody that missed it, oh yeah, one more thing. I want to I really want to show you how fast this guy works. Um, so we'll go ahead and start take. So it's going to take a single image, print a four by six, and then it's going to upload to Event Gallery. And we're going to see. Um, I'll just go back. Okay, accept. No, we don't need it sent. Okay, so it's printing. Come on, exit. And click on demo. Now you can see it's already there before the printer even got out, before I could get to the page. So this is a good way if you wanted to just have it running in the background. This is an easy way to set up a kiosk option. From here you can, um, you can text it, um, uh, email it. So if you're using the event gallery, um, and even awesome, more awesome, I think you can, uh, you can have a QR code that you scan. Um, and then they can do whatever they want from their phone. So you don't even have to have a, uh, a kiosk running. They have a kiosk in their pocket. So uh, if you haven't checked out Event Gallery, I, it's one of the coolest things I think that we can make. Okay, let's go through some questions. Hopefully it's not too many because I know everybody likes to save them all for the end. And then, uh, okay, I usually shoot in RAW. Darkroom booth is, doesn't work with RAW images. So that's uh, if, if you want to, Raw um, is would not necessarily be an autom uh, automated process because you're doing corrections afterwards. If you do want to shoot in raw and apply a preset, um, if you look up Eugene Wise, there's a, a video that I put out using Lightroom with Darkroom Core and Wi-Fi oh, wi camera that goes over raw. Um, it's not on Darkroom's page because it's kind of like just more photography. But um, yeah, raw and Darkroom booth do not go together. Um, is it possible to enable something via command, something like light printing, light photo light hose? Not via command, but you can you can just set your camera exposure or uh, shutter speed to be like 30 seconds with and just have a blacked out room and do light, um, light painting, I'm assuming is what you're asking about. Um, can you wrap up to USB? Yeah, um, you just want to make sure that you select a folder on the USB drive rather than the um, the drive itself. So uh, wrap it up to your USB as possible. I don't recommend it because it's actually faster, I think, to go to the computer, to write to the computer and then drag it over. And uh, also, if there's any type of uh, writing errors or any issues like that, you wouldn't know until it fails. So uh, I typically say go to the computer first and then drag it over. And you can test out the two and see which one's faster. I think it'd be faster go having the two steps um, and less problems. Just my, can I get extra on saving video and output? Um, I 
It, yeah, if you run on if you run into issues, contact support um, saving video in output. Uh, video doesn't save in output. It, your video files are saved to um, uh, your videos folder. So I didn't record any videos, but um, if I had, I'd go open containing folder, and right next to my photos folder, there would be a videos folder. But yeah, it won't use the output settings. Um, darkroom booth advanced, when will it be held? Um, I don't know, but we haven't set any dates for an advanced class. I'm sure we'll have one, but um, Photo Booth Expo is coming up. I It's actually my anniversary, so I won't be at the Expo. I'll be skiing, but um, maybe in March. Um, I know we're planning a, a, a basic Q&A where you can just ask as many questions as you want, uh, possibly even after hours. Um, so coming soon, uh, advanced, I think, probably. But Darkroom support.com essentially answers all of these questions just in a, a more um, uh, easy to absorb smaller videos. But uh, can you have support from, uh, yeah, Darkroom offers support when you purchase the software. So um, specifically for me, uh, it, it It'll go kind of round robin who who picks it up, um, but um, mirrored DSLR has uh, they move. Okay, so the issue with the mirror flipping up in the camera, um, going from live view to prepare to take a picture of that delay. Um, you can, uh, you can add a hold the pose text that's set to display whenever it's capturing. Um, you have control over when certain pieces of uh, graphics or uh, text show up. Um, a lot of people have a uh, something that says, um, uh, "Wait for the flash." So um, that uh, that's a little. It's helpful um, letting them know there any sellers of the software in Italy. I I don't know. I mean, you could buy the software straight from our website, um, but. Um, yeah, uh, so it's it. We where the software is. Uh, you purchase it on our website, and then you um, you get activation code. So you don't have to wait for anything to ship in the mail. So um, no issues with uh, Europe or any, anywhere overseas. Where can we rewatch this live stream? Okay, so um, darkroomsupport.com. Um, you're gonna click on home, or when you go to darkroomsupport.com, it'll take you here. You can click on darkroom booth and then scroll down to the very bottom. And we have webinars. And uh, as soon as it's done recording, I'm going to start editing and post it up via YouTube. But this is where it'll be. And then I have um, the same list I've been working on um, with uh, links that go over more in depth uh, everything we've talked about. So. This is the page right here. Um, and same thing for the other videos. If uh, the ones we've done, uh, we did in the last couple weeks. And I'll add actually the old videos that we have as well under the uh, webinar section. So if you're curious about core, there's a webinar section at the very bottom. And uh, the one from two weeks ago. So I think that's where, where we'll always add the webinars so you can always go back and watch them as many times as you want. Did I make it through everybody's questions? Did I miss anybody? Uh, and uh, amazingly, we stayed pretty well on time. Um, I think I'm getting...
Awesome. Well, thank you all so much um, um, for joining me today. And uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe. Uh, almost, I think it's every Thursday I try to have a new video, and sometimes we come out with more than one video a week. So um, check out um, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Oh, we got one more really good question. Are there any pre-made templates on your site? Um, darkroomtemplates.com. Whoops, that's not right. Uh, has a whole bunch of pre-made XBDR files ready to go specifically for Darkroom. Um, so these these are already have the um, photo objects already pre-built into them. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, find me on YouTube or also uh, darkroomsupport.com. And then uh, you guys have a good one. Um, thanks for being great customers. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. If there's a topic that you wanna learn a little bit more about, be sure to comment below, like, subscribe, and click the little notification bell so when we, we release a new video, I'll let you know. Here's some other videos you might like. Most importantly, thanks for being a customer. I'll see you next time.